Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 24th of April. I'm still expecting overall this bounce to continue possibly for a few more weeks. The target zone remains the same, 3069 to 3261. When I can use Fibonacci ratios to narrow that down to a smaller target, I will do so, but I can't do that yet. When the bounce is over, I am expecting the downward trend for the S&P to resume with quite a lot of strength. For the short term, if we see a new low below 2727.10 and below the trend channel before we see any highs, then we may expect the bounce could be over. It has to happen before new highs though. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last as usual. The Elliott Wave count sees the bull market beginning in March 2009 as a five wave structure. The simplest Elliott Wave structure is five steps forward, three steps back. Five steps forward from March 2009 up to the last all time high here in February is seen as a complete impulse and now a three step back pattern to follow it is seen as most likely a zigzag. The five steps forward is labelled cycle wave one, the three steps back is labelled cycle wave two. Cycle wave two can be any corrective structure except a triangle and it's most likely going to be a zigzag. Zigzag subdivide five, three, five. As we get further through this bear market, I may need to change the degree of labelling within cycle wave 2. Early on in a new trend, getting the degree of labelling right is the most difficult thing to figure out. I may need to move this degree of labelling down one degree. It is possible that wave A may not be complete and it may be continuing lower. And This could just be wave 1 within wave A and we do have an alternate wave count which looks at that possibility but there is another important difference too. Whether this is wave A or wave 1, the rule for the bounce is the same. Wave B of a zigzag may not move beyond the start of A. Wave 2 of an impulse may not move beyond the start of 1. So for both ideas, the invalidation point is back at the all-time high. The target here is for cycle wave 2 to reach down to the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of cycle wave 1. And cycle wave 2 may not move beyond the start of cycle wave 1 below the beginning of the bull market from March 2009. Let's take a look at the structure of cycle 2 and how it may be unfolding at the daily chart level from the all time high back here, which is this point up here. From this high to this low, this downward movement does fit very well as a five wave impulse. And so I'm going to label this so far wave A. And I'm going to label this bounce wave B. A couple of weeks ago I took some time to look at the normal depth and duration of bounces, the first major bounce within a bear market. I looked at the dot-com crash and I looked at the global financial crisis. I looked at all the major bounces within that to look at what to, what to look for to see when they may be complete. And then I also paid particular attention to the first two major bounces in those bear markets and I noted that they were particularly deep. And here's the range. If primary wave B of this bear market follows the pattern of the last two and it's particularly deep, here is a range that it may reach up to from 0.73 to 0.89 the length of primary wave A. So that's how I've calculated the target zone. Primary wave B may subdivide as any corrective Elliott wave structure, including a triangle, but it would most likely be an impulse and so far from this low on up, it looks like, sorry, most likely be a zigzag. So far from this low on upward, it looks like an impulse may be unfolding, which would indicate primary B may indeed be a zigzag, because zigzags subdivide 5, 3, 5, and they are, by quite a wide margin, the most common Elliott wave structure. And so it may be that only wave A of this bounce may be nearing completion, possibly to end next week, and then a downward or sideways movement for wave B may unfold and then a final five wave structure up for wave C may end somewhere in the target zone. If we do see a five wave impulse complete early next week with a new high, a 
above this point and preferably above this point but it only needs to be above this point so that 5 moves beyond the end of 3. If that does happen then I would have more confidence in this labelling. I've drawn a channel here around intermediate wave A using Elliot's first technique. I've drawn the first trend line from 1 to 3 and placed a parallel copy on 2. 4 so far remains contained within the channel. 5 may end about the upper edge of the channel or it could end about midway in the channel. When 5 could be complete then a breach of the channel would indicate wave A could be over and intermediate wave B could then be underway. Intermediate wave B would be a B wave within a B wave and by a really big margin they are the most difficult movements to analyse. They are often, most often, analogous to complicated sideways consolidations with lots of swings from resistance to support and back again and each swing not moving in a straight line being very choppy and overlapping. The most difficult part is to figure out what structure they're unfolding as and multiple short term wave counts would be required. It may find support now at the lower edge of this big multi year channel which is really important. It provided resistance here, resistance was broken through, and we may be about to see a back test of support there for intermediate B. When I know where primary wave B may have ended, then I can use a Fibonacci ratio between A and C to calculate a target for the bear market to end. At that stage, this target may change or it may widen to a small zone as I can then calculate the target not at just one but at two wave degrees. At the hourly chart level here's the end of intermediate wave A, here's minor three, a combination for minor four and minor five underway with minute one. Minute two could be over here, minute three could be underway if we see a new high above this point early and when markets open on Monday then I'd label minute two over and I'd pull the invalidation point up here. For now let's allow for the possibility that minute two may continue sideways. If it does continue sideways and lower look out for pretty strong support at the lower edge of this Elliott channel which I've copied over from the daily chart. When minor 5 moves beyond the end of minor 3 and preferably beyond the price extreme of minor 4, as soon as we get new highs above this point and the structure of minor 5 could be complete, look out for the possible end, probably next week, of intermediate wave A. And when that's done, we'll then be looking for choppy, overlapping, complicated movement for intermediate wave B to really test our patience. When B is over, then C should then continue on upward. Minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1. It is possible that the bounce could be over. Obviously a new high above this point would invalidate this idea pretty quickly and that only needs to be a breach by any amount at any time frame. A fraction of a point on a tick chart is enough to invalidate this wave count. Minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1. This wave count is possible but it doesn't have a lot of support from classic analysis and while price remains within the channel which I've tried to draw in the same way we should assume that for the short term the upward trend remains the same. If we see a breach of the channel and a new low below this point while this wave count remains valid while it has not been invalidated if we see a new low below this point then we can seriously consider it. At the daily chart level if we move the degree of labelling within the whole of that bull market or up one degree instead of just a first wave being complete the whole structure for super cycle 5 and grand super cycle 1 could be complete. The all time high back here could have been a once in multi generational trend change and an absolutely huge bear market may just be in its very early stages. Sadly the confirmation point is a long way away. The first daily chart expects a continuation of the bear market but for it to be over in another possibly another year or two. This second very very bearish wave count expects it to, to continue for several more years probably at least 10 to 20 years. This is an extremely bearish wave count but the price point which differentiates them is a long way away and because for the first wave count that second wave correction could be really deep, second waves can be very deep, 
we would probably get pretty close to the confirmation point before we would know or reach the confirmation point before we would know which of these two wave counts is correct. They are both entirely valid. It's all just to do with degree of labelling. The invalidation point is exactly the same here. Cycle 1, cycle 2, 5 steps forward, 3 steps back, 2 may not move beyond the start of 1. When 2 is complete, a third wave down should then begin. At the hourly chart level, these wave counts are absolutely the same, except the degree of labelling is 1 degree higher. At the weekly chart level this week, completes an inside week which is closed red. There's a bullish long lower wick, but overall this is a doji. Sideways movement indicates a balance of bulls and bears and indecision. And it's pretty normal to see these kind of doji within a movement. On its own, it is not a reversal signal. Overall downward movement within the week does not have push from volume. On balance volume is at weak support. This may help halt a fall in price, but it doesn't necessarily have to because the support is fairly weak. RSI is well back down into neutral territory after reaching overbrought at, pre at the prior highs. ADX indicates a downward trend which is still extreme. It's based on a 14 week average. This is a weekly chart. And with only four weeks off the low now, ADX has not caught up with this bounce. That's pretty normal. It doesn't usually catch up with bounces in bear markets, so I won't expect it to. RSI also doesn't normally reach overbrought with bounces in bear markets, but stochastics, when we get to the daily chart, should reach overbrought and may then exhibit some bearish divergence. At the daily chart level, Let's see, Stochastics is reach, has reached overbrought. It may remain there for a bit longer. Let's see if it gets fully back up into overbrought and then starts to exhibit some bearish divergence. RSI may not reach into overbrought at the daily chart level either with this bounce. It doesn't always reach overbrought in bounces in bear markets. The last gap is now closed, closed, so it's just a little pattern gap, as was this one. A small consolidation unfolding here. We need to see a breakout, bullish or bearish. So far, this doesn't look like either necessarily a flag or a pennant pattern, but I'll keep an eye on that if price continues sideways next week. Upward movement for Friday sees a little bit of a decline in volume. Volume is not supporting upward movement. And if this is a bounce a bear market bounce then I wouldn't necessarily expect volume to be supporting upward movement. Volume is declining as prices moved sideways for this week. Pretty normal for a small consolidation. ADX reached extreme or very extreme for the previous downward trend. It's now continuing to decline. It hasn't yet indicated that there may be a new upward trend. ATR is declining as price moves higher. That's absolutely normal behaviour for this bear market. Let's continue to watch on balance volume carefully again next week. It has a now more technically significant range. A break particularly below support would be bearish. A break above resistance would be a less significant but still a bullish signal. RSI is a neutral territory. MACD full bore bullish now. Stochastics re-entering overbrought. Let's see if it can reach up into here and let's see if it exhibits some bearish divergence with price. At the weekly chart level this week, I'm not going to expect this, I'm not going to read this as any divergence with the AD line. An inside week closes red, the AD line slightly declines and so it agrees with downward movement within the week. It was a little bit of a decline in breadth with downward movement within the week. No divergence there. At the daily chart level, price has moved higher for the last three days, as has the AD line. Neither have made new short-term highs. There is no short-term divergence. But between price and inverted VIX, there is. Inverted VIX increased this week while price moved sideways. Downward movement within the week does not come with a normal corresponding increase in market volatility. Market volatility has declined and I am interpreting this as bullish divergence for the short term which would support the Elliott wave count. 
at the daily chart level as well, inverted VIX has made a new short-term swing high, but price hasn't managed to make a corresponding high. Upward movement has a more than normal decline in volatility, and so I expect reading volatility as a leading indicator. This divergence is bullish for the short term and supports the Elliott wave count. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope that all of our members are staying safe and staying healthy.